In this video, we're showing you how you can make jewellery in wood. So to start this process off, you've got to get your wood prepared. What we're actually doing in this example is to use two different coloured woods stuck together. So the first part of the process is to sand those woods flat. This means that they can be glued together more successfully. You then go on to cutting out your design, stick those onto the wood that is going to be on the front of the jewellery and then use carbon paper to draw the design onto the wood itself. Now we've actually done two different videos when it comes to making jewellery. This video has hand carving included in it. We also have another video where we demonstrate how to make jewellery on a scroll saw where you don't actually need any hand carving. But if you're interested in having a go at the hand carving, if it's something you want to do, this video will demonstrate how you can make jewellery on a scroll saw but then hand carve it afterwards. Once you have drawn your design onto the wood itself, we then glue the two contrasting pieces of wood together and we're working on our pierce work. So what we do, we drill a hole, a pilot hole that will be used afterwards to do all of those internal cuts. Now in the first demonstration, I actually do the process in the opposite way I would recommend doing it because what you'll see me doing is cutting the outline of the project first and then going on to doing the pierce work. Uh, in some projects you have to do it this way but in this particular one I would actually recommend doing your pierce work so all of your internal cuts first and then cut your outline afterwards especially if you are new to working with the scroll saw if you are a beginner. The reason I recommend this is a perfect example is the treble clef. Now because we're making jewellery these pieces are quite small, they're quite delicate and they can be difficult to grip. If you do your pierce work first you have a slightly bigger piece of wood to grip just making life ever so slightly easier. So I would recommend do your pierce work first and then cut the outline. For any of you who are wondering why we have chosen to use two different coloured woods, Basically what happens, we sand the top layer down ever so slightly thinner and as we're doing our carving then, the back layer comes through and it gives you a little bit of extra interest in the work that you've done. So in the example of the rose, as we carve out the individual petals, we start to see the mahogany, the back coloured wood, coming through really does add a, a different dimension to, to the work. Um, afterwards, when we put our finish on, it'll really make the, the jewellery stand out. It just adds an extra bit of appeal. Similar then to a lot of the projects that we do and a lot of the work we do here at our family workshop, we get our basic profile using our scroll saw. So that gives us the form of what we are making and then we apply our hand carving skills to bring out the character to really add an extra element to what we're doing. In this case we're bringing out that different coloured wood but the hand carving it really does give these individual pieces of jewellery their character. As mentioned, if you're not interested in that, there is that other video that may be more suitable to your interests. Now the process that we demonstrated here, you can adapt it to all sorts of different designs and styles. That's what I always suggest, use what we've done as a guide, but adapt it to your own skills, your own interests, and make it more personal 
to the way you do things and the way you see things. The designs in we've included, you've got that rose, we've got a daffodil, national emblem of course here in Wales, there's that treble clef, our buffalo, that was actually requested so that is why we included that design and the final one that we are making is our Celtic Eternity sign. Those of you who are eagle-eyed, you may notice as I start to carve our Eternity sign or Trinity Knot, whatever you refer to it as, uh, the top layer on one part of the design just started moving a little bit. The reason for that is that I obviously hadn't glued it to the bottom layer as well as I would have hoped. Um, good example for you all to see though that when we're doing these projects not everything goes to plan and you have to just adapt and adjust accordingly. So what I did, we stopped the filming, got some super glue, stuck it back together as it should have been in the first place, waited for it to dry and continued with the project. But it's a good example for how with woodworking, wood carving, scroll sawing, things will go wrong, you have to deal with whatever the issue is. And there's been many occasions over the years where we've adapted what we're making in order to deal with something that hasn't gone entirely to plan. Now for those of you who uh, watch our videos and are interested in the scroll sawing and the woodworking projects we do in general, we've actually added a page to our website. And on this page, we've got templates and links to the different videos demonstrating how to make the different projects. So if you like the projects that we make, if you're interested in having a go at these yourself, get on over to the link. It's in the description below for this video. Check all of that out and you can have a go at making these projects. So there we go, the final one you'll see us carving out is the treble clef. Just doing a little bit of detail, bringing out that back coloured wood and just finishing off that shape. Finishing the shape, we've got a basic profile with the scroll saw and then the hand carving just gives it a different dimension again. Once we've done that, we then go on to our finishing. So we do some hand sanding always sanding in the same direction as the grain, using a finer sandpaper, I would suggest P240 and above. You can go as fine as you want to, it just depends how much time you want to spend on the project and how fine a finish you want. On to our finishing and we're actually using a slightly different process than we've explained on a number of our other demonstration videos. We're using two coats of shellac sanding sealer as opposed to our normal three, rubbing it down in between each coat with a fine sandpaper, applying it always with the direction of the grain as much as possible. After we put our two coats of shellac sanding sealer, we put a finishing layer of linseed oil mixed with beeswax. Now that the item has been finished, the final part of the process is adding the loop. We've got some leather cords that we are using for our necklaces. So these examples, we've actually put that cord on using two different methods. The first method is to drill a hole through the top and to feed the cord through. So that worked on some of the designs, but we also had to use a second method and that is where we use our spike to bore a guide hole. We then used a metal loop with a screw in the end, screwed it into the top of our jewellery and then put the leather cord uh, in through the metal eye. Both methods can be used for making your jewellery. Let us know in the comments section below which one of those designs is your favourite. Which of them do you plan on having a go at making yourself? If you're new here and you like what we do, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when we upload another video. And as always, thank you again for watching.